Hello and welcome grade 12s to yet another Learn Extra Accounting lesson where we're here to help you prepare for that upcoming very important exams. Now in today's lesson guys, we are going to be focusing on one of the questions in the November 2012 final paper. The question that we're going to be looking at is question 6 on the projected income statement. But before we look at the projected income statement, I want to quickly go through a checklist to see whether or not you remember to do the following on this section. So let's go to that checklist. Right, firstly guys, are you able to distinguish between a cash budget and a projected income statement. In other words, do you know the difference between a cash budget and the projected income statement? Now let's start off by looking at or recapping on the projected income statement. So if I had to ask you what is the definition of a projected income statement, this is the answer I expect you to give me. So your projected income statement looks at or focuses at future income. This is key. It looks at future income versus future expenses. Future, obviously something that hasn't happened as yet, but what do you anticipate to happen in the future in terms of the income as well as the expenses for that particular month to come? Will there be a projected Again, projected, looking at future, profit, or will there be a loss? And again, this is regarding the projected income statement. So the key, guys, when you're looking at projected income statement, and especially in your definition, the business is looking at future income versus future expenses. Will there be a future profit, or will the business experience a loss? Right, let's now look at the cash budget. The difference, remember, we're focusing on the difference between a projected income statement and a cash budget. So let's now turn our attention to the cash budget. Now, when you are defining a cash budget, firstly, what is a cash budget? A cash budget looks at, again, future, but this time receipts versus future payments. So money physically that the business is going to be receiving going into their bank account versus physical payments, money that will be leaving their bank account. And then will there be a cash surplus or a shortfall. Again, focusing on that bank balance. So at the end of the budgeted month, are you expecting to have cash in your bank account? In other words, a surplus of cash, or are you expecting a shortfall of cash? You're gonna run short of cash for that particular month, hence you need to make um, arrangements for a bank overdraft. Okay, so very important. What's the difference between a cash budget and a projected income statement. Now remember, still with what you need to remember, a cash budget will not include non-cash items. So there won't be items such as depreciation. It's a common non-cash item. You are not going to find the, this particular item in your cash budget. So please remember, guys, the key, and I'm sure your teacher has emphasized on this, the key when you're drawing up a cash budget, you're focusing on receipts and payments, whereas in the projected income statement, you are focusing on income and expenses. Okay, then what else do we need to remember to do? In your question or in your final exams, you will be required to compare actual results to budgeted figures. In other words, and you're going to see this later on when we're doing the November question, where you're going to be given your budgeted figures, what you expect to happen for a particular month, and then actual figures. And this is where you're going to need to compare and um, make some kind of statement in terms of whether the business has gone over budget or under budget. Right, and then finally, guys, you're going to be asked to, 
in certain questions to give advice regarding control measures for over or under budget figures. Okay, that was a quick checklist on this particular section itself. I think we're now ready to start with an exam question. So let's go straight into that November 2006 question six. Right, let's now go through the information first. Let's read through the entire question and then we will obviously look at the individual questions on the information given to us. Right, so the information that I have in front of me is, okay, let's just find the question first and then we'll look at the information. Okay, right, there we go. The Happy Holiday Shop is owned by Jim Jumbo. You are provided with extracts from the projected income statement which Jim prepared for three months ending 31st December 2012. So immediately you know you are giving or you are given information regarding three months ending, so the month of October, November and of course the month of December. He has not or he has included a column for the actual expenses that he has incurred in October. So for the month of October you've got budget figures and you have actual figures given to you. Right, we're going to look at the required in a moment. What I want to do now is let's go through to the information. So let's look at that projected income statement that we are given. Okay, so very quickly, our months, we've got the month of October given to us. Let's just get the pen out. So we've got the month of October. Then we've got, got the month of November and finally the month of December. Right, now remember, apart from the budgeted figures for those three months, they are also giving us the actual figures for the month of November. So very quickly, guys, if we look at the income statement that we have in front of us, we've got sales, cost of sales, gross profit, all the way down to interest expense. Right, then some additional information for us to read through first. Jim bought the land and buildings for 1.2 million in 2011. So land and buildings, Jim obviously owns property. He rents out an unused portion of this property to a tenant so obviously he's going to be receiving or he expects to receive rent income. The rent will increase by 5% on the 1st of November 2012, in other words, in the budgeted month itself. Right, next part regarding land and buildings, next bit of information. Jim had received a loan from his brother to pay for the land and buildings. So he's taken out a loan. The balance of this loan was 1 million on the 1st of October 2012. The interest rate is 15% per annum and the loan is reduced. Reduced obviously means that there is a payment towards the loan by 50,000 Rand per month on the last day of the month. Interest is paid monthly and interest is not capitalized. Okay, right, next bit of information. Currently, Jim places five advertisements per month in the local newspaper. He plans to increase this to eight advertisements in December, the rate per advertisement will increase by 10% on the 1st of December 2012. Right, next bit of info. Number three, Jim would like to improve his projected income statement. So obviously he wants to earn a higher net income and is considering a proposal from a local businessman Samuel Davids. So let's look at this proposal. Samuel is prepared to purchase all the land and buildings of the business from Jim 
for one and a half million during the month of December 2012 and then rent it to him for 10,500 Rand per month. Jim is interested in this offer as he knows that this will enable him to repay the loan from his brother in full on the 1st of January 2013. Then they tell you in brackets the loan on the state will be 850,000 Rand. He will also be able to invest the surplus funds, in other words, after selling the property in a fixed deposit at 6% per annum. Okay, right guys, we read through the information um, and we got a field for the question itself or the information rather. Let's now look at the actual question. Okay, so our questions for this particular um, information that I just read out. Our very first question. Explain why it is important for Jim to prepare a projected income statement and this is for two marks. Okay, now we've been through this already. Why is it important for the owner to prepare a projected income statement? Now remember, from our recap earlier on, a projected income statement helps him to look at future income versus future expenses in order for him to determine whether he's going to be making a profit or a loss in the, the future itself. So let's look at the way in which we would answer this question. Okay, so the expected answers for this particular question would be as follows. To reflect the profit or the loss the business can expect to make, obviously in the future itself, it also enables him to plan properly and to anticipate any problems which could arise. So by him budgeting, by him preparing this projected income statement, he will be able to anticipate whether his expenses are way too high or um, there's going to be problems in terms of um, controlling these expenses itself. And then finally, so that he can compare budgeted to actual figures in order to take the corrective action. Okay, especially if there are any discrepancies. Okay, so for two marks, guys, please remember you don't have to write down all three points. It's just one point that you need to explain. The third question regarding markup. During the month of October, a competitor opened a shop up in the same area, opened a shop in the same area. Jim decided to adjust his markup percentage immediately to counter the new competitor. So adjust his markup. Um, what I'm suspecting happened here is he decided to lower his markup. Calculate the markup percentage he actually achieved in the month of October. So remember guys, again, back to the information that they gave us, for the month of October, we've got budgeted figures, but we've also got actual figures given to us. So this question wants us to calculate what was the actual markup percentage that he achieved for the month of October. So let's now again go to our information. Okay, so in the information itself, we are obviously looking at the month of October and we're looking at markup achieved. So October, not the budgeted figures, but rather the actual figures for October. Markup percentage, I'm sure you guys remember how to do this calculation. I'm just going to quickly erase what I've written here so that we can do this calculation. Markup percentage, I'm simply taking my gross profit for the month of October and I will divide this by my cost of sales. I want a percentage, so I must remember to multiply it by 100. Right, from the info, my gross profit is given to me at 220,500. And then above my gross profit, there's my cost of sale. So let's do this calculation. Okay, so we're taking gross profit 220,500. And we're going to divide this by cost of sales 490,000. Okay. 
and we we're going to obviously multiply this by 100 to get a markup percentage actually achieved of 45%. So I'm going to write that down for you guys. He achieved a markup of, of 45%. Now, before we go back to the question, guys, I want to look at what was his budgeted markup that he wanted to achieve. Okay, so again, I'm going to take out my calculator, but this time I'm going to be looking at the budgeted figures. So if I look at the gross profit that he expected to achieve, 221,250, divide this by cost of sales, the figure at the top, 368,750, okay, and then multiply this by 100. So he expected to achieve a markup percentage of 60%. Did he achieve that? No, he didn't. So I just want to quickly write that down. Let's use a different color. So he expected to achieve a markup of 60%, but because of this new competitor, he decided to lower his markup, obviously sell the items at a lower price to his customers, and this was the markup that he achieved, 45%. So let's go back to the question, and in a moment you will see the importance of doing this calculation, of calculating the 60%. So let's go back to the question, rather. Okay. Right, there is our markup. Okay, I've already done the calculation. So 45% for three marks. And then the next part of the question, explain whether or not it was a good idea to change the markup percentage from its original target. In other words, the original tar target we know was 60% and he achieved a markup of, of 45%. Right, now clearly guys, this is where you need to answer yes or no and then provide a reason for, for stating either yes or no. Now if we go back to the information and that's what we need to look at we need to look at the information let's firstly look at what happened to sales his budget for sales or the budgeted figure for sales for the month of October was 590 thousand but if we look at his actual sales the actual sales figure seven hundred and ten thousand five hundred so obviously by lowering his markup he was able to sell more goods but was this beneficial to the business itself if we look further down cost of sales the actual cost of sales was obviously much higher which resulted in if we look at gross profit his gross profit for the month of October is much lower than what he budgeted for. So he budgeted gross profit 221,250, but his actual gross profit was 220,500. So despite selling more, his actual profit was much less. So let's look at how we could answer this question. Right. Right. For those students who would have given or responded with a no, so in other words, okay, it was not a good idea, okay, your explanation would be even though the actual sales were much more than budgeted, we saw that actual sales were 770, budgeted was I think 500 and something. It did not result in a higher gross profit and that is why you are saying no, it wasn't a good idea to lower the markup. Some students, on the other hand, might say yes. Yes, it was a good idea. Let's look at the reason for saying yes. Sales increased. We saw that. Your sales figures did increase significantly. Although the gross profit was apparently the same or the gross profit was lower, okay, I think it was... I'm not sure how much lower it was, but it was obviously lower. The business has now more customers, 
more customers means goodwill which will benefit them in the future in other words your customers they're obviously now aware of your business they're aware of the items that you sell and this re results in goodwill where they're going to obviously support the business in the future right another reason that you could give for stating yes if they did not decrease their gross profit margin from 60 percent to 45 percent they would not stay competitive and sales could drop and consequently net profit will also drop so remember you've got a new competitor um, in the same area selling the same products and obviously by lowering your markup you were able to compete with this competitor so guys please remember for this type of question think about it clearly if for example you feel the answer is no you need to substantiate but if for you, the answer is yes. Again, you need to provide reasons as to why you are stating yes, it was a good idea. Okay. Right, guys, I think it's time for us to take a quick break. So if you want to go and grab something to eat or get something to drink, I suggest you do that now, and I will see you immediately after the break. Welcome back, guys. Um, just before the break, we completed question 1.3, and now we're ready to look at 1.4. Right, 1.4 wants us to do the following. Calculate the following figures in the projected income statement. OK, what do they want us to calculate? Firstly, rent income for November 2012. And for that, they're asking us to refer to additional information one. Then the next figure, advertising for the month of December 2012. And for that, we're going to refer to additional information two. And then finally, they want us to also calculate the interest expense for the month of November 2012. And again, we need to refer to additional information, this time additional information one. Right, so let's do that. Let's start off with firstly rent income. Okay, so they want us to work out or calculate the rent income for the month of November and for that we need to go to information number one so let's go to that bit of information so information one okay we've got there Jim bought land and buildings for 1,2 million in 2011 he rents out an unused portion of this property to a tenant the rent will increase Okay, the rent will increase by 5% on the 1st of November 2012. Right, guys, quite a simple calculation, a question that is always repeated in your exams. Calculate what the new rent will be. In other words, after this 5% increase. So if we go to our information, we're obviously looking at the month of November Okay, so for November, the rent obviously not given to us, but if we look at what the rent was in the month or in the previous month, the rent was 5,200. All we're doing is adding on a further 5% to work out what is our new rent. So let's go to our answer sheet and let's do just that. Okay, so our rent for the month of November, our old rent was 5,200 times, we're going to add on 5%. So in other words, we're now going to multiply this by 105 divided by 100 to work out what is our new rent. Okay, so let's get our calculator out. 5,200, the old rent, multiplied by 105, 105 because I'm adding on 5%, divided by 100, and the new rent that the tenant is going to pay is an amount of 5,460. Okay, so let's fill that in, 5,460. Right, quite simple, quite straightforward, guys. And for this, I'm just going to show you mark allocation. This would be three marks. 
Right, let's move on to the next calculation. The next calculation is advertising for December 2012. So I'm just going to quickly write that down. Advertising as an expense for the month of December. Okay, and for that we need to refer to information number two. So back to our info sheet. Okay, information two, let's read through the information first and then we do the calculation. Currently, Jim places five advertisements per month in the local newspaper. He plans to increase this to eight advertisements in December. The rate per advertisement will increase by 10% on the 1st of December 2012. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we obviously need to look at the previous month, which is the month of November. And remember, in the month of November, you've got five advertisements that were placed for this month. In December, it has increased to eight. So the first thing that we need to do or need to ask ourselves is how much are we paying per advertisement? So let's do that. Let's go to the month of November. Okay, and we're obviously looking at advertising. That's our expense. For the month of November, our advertising expense, budgeted expense is 4,000. And remember, this is for five um, adverts. So I'm gonna take my 4,000 divide this by five and each advertisement costs the business 800 rand. Okay, so let's go back to the information. Okay, so each advertisement costs the business 800 rand. I'm just going to write that down for you guys. Right, what are we planning to do in December? We're planning to increase this to eight advertisements. The rate per advertisement will increase by 10% on the 1st of December 2012. So in other words, they're not going to charge us 800 rand anymore. Instead, they're going to add on 10%. So if we add on 10%, all we're doing is adding on 10% off 800 would give me 80 Rand so the new cost per advertisement would be 880 we plan on placing eight adverts for the month of December so we're gonna then multiply this by eight in order for us to get our new advertising cost for this month okay so 880 plus another 80 Rand to give me 880, multiply this by 8, and that would give me my new advertising expense, 7,040. Straightforward, guys, not difficult calculations. So I'm going to go to my answer sheet, and I'm just going to write this down. I'm not going to reshow the working, but remember, you guys obviously need to show working out. On the answer sheet itself, my advertising expense for the month of December, 7,040 Rand. Okay. Right, let's look at the last calculation. The last calculation is for my interest expense and it's for the month of November. So let's just quickly write that down. We are asked to calculate what is the interest expense for the month of November. Right, again, they want us to refer to this time back to information number one. So let's do that information and let's go to information number one Jim had received a loan from his from his brother to pay for the land and buildings the balance of this loan was 1 million rand on the 1st of October 2012 okay so my loan on the 1st of October is sitting at 1 million rand Okay, if I read on, the interest rate is 15% per annum and the loan is reduced by 50,000 Rand per month on the last day of the month. Interest is paid monthly and is not capitalized. Okay, right guys, quite a straightforward interest calculation. Remember, whenever I am doing interest um, calculation or the amount of interest expense, I always use art. Okay, 
Right. Do we all know what art stands for? I'm sure you do. Your teachers often use this. Art refers to the amount, the amount of the loan on a particular date multiplied by rate, R is for rate, in this case the rate is 15% and then very very important the time. Now remember we are working out the interest expense just for the month of November so in terms of time we obviously only looking at one month. Okay, right, we'll come back to that calculation, but for now, let's just quickly go back to the information, something that we need to take into account, something additional that we need to take into account when doing this calculation. My loan amount on the 1st of October is a million rand, but what's going to happen at the end of October? If I go to this part of the information, the loan is paid or reduced by 50,000 Rand per month on the last day of the month. In other words, at the end of October, on the 31st of October, we're going to repay 50,000, which, which means the amount on my loan is no longer a million Rand, but a million Rand minus 50,000 to give me 950,000. Okay, so that is the amount that I'm working on, 950,000. Let's take this amount through in our answer sheet and then we'll continue with the calculation. So my amount, okay, in brackets, I'm going to quickly reshow the calculation. 1 million minus 50,000, okay, to obviously give me 950,000. So I now have amount, I need my rate, and then obviously time as well. The rate, if we go to back to the information, the rate of interest charged is 15% per annum. So again, back to our answer sheet, so my rate is 15%, so times this by 15%. And then the time we are only asked to work out the interest for the month of November. So my time would be 1 over 12. Okay. Right. Ready now to work out the interest that we expect to pay. So let's just quickly clear that. 950,000 times 15%. Okay. And then it's only for one month. So let's divide that by 12, and the interest that we expect to pay on this loan, 11,875. Okay, so 11,875. Right, guys, quite simple calculations, but remember, no matter how simple a calculation is, always show some working out so that if you get your final answer incorrect, you obviously get part marks for showing the workings. Okay, let's now move on to our next question on this projected income statement. Question 1.5. Refer to the actual and budgeted figures for the month of October 2012. Now remember, in that projected income statement, we were given for the month of October actual figures, what really happened, uh, happened as well as budgeted figures, what we expected to happen. Identify the three overhead expenses that have been poorly controlled by Jim. Quote figures to support your answer, and this is for six marks. Okay, so the question itself wants us to look at that projected income statement specifically at expenses, and we need to identify three expenses where um, it was controlled poorly by the owner. In other words, there was an over budget, more money was actually incurred, or the expense was much higher than what was budgeted for. Okay, so let's now go to our information. And again, we're looking at the, at the projected income statement. I just want to quickly clear this so that it's easier for us to see. Okay, let's get the pen out. We're looking at this part of the projected income statement. Okay, and remember our focus is 
sorry, not the entire projected income statements. I'm going to just take that out. We're only looking at our expenses. Okay, so let's get that back. So we're looking at this part of the projected income statement. Right, there's my actual figures and then obviously budgeted figures. So we need to identify three expenses that was, is obviously problematic to the business. Right, let's look at maintenance of property because salaries is not given to us. So maintenance of property, our first expense, we budgeted, okay, 4000 for this expense, but the actual expense came to 7000 So clearly, maintenance of property is problematic. Right, then municipal rates on property, budget 1000 actual 1000 so this was absolutely fine. Okay, I'm just going to put a cross there, that was fine. The telephone, okay, budget 1500 the actual telephone expense was 1200 so this is perfectly fine. Why is it fine? Because although we budgeted for 1500 we managed to reduce this expense to 1200 so this is excellent. Right, let's look at the next expense, water and electricity, budget 1200 but the actual expense was 5600 so clearly this was not managed well water and electricity advertising budget 4000 actual 4000 so this is absolutely fine stationery is not given to us so we cannot comment on stationery and then we've got our next expense trading stock deficit budget was 8000 but the actual loss of stock was 12300 so clearly another expense that was poorly controlled by the owner okay so the question wants us to identify three we've identified three and now we need to list these three on our answer sheet the three that we've identified one more time maintenance of property being one because clearly we can see that we've spent 3,000 or we've incurred 3,000 Rand more in terms of this expense. Then we've got water and electricity. Okay, our budget was 1,200. Okay, 1,200, but our actual expense was 5,600. So clearly, over budget was 4,400. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down for you guys. 4,400 and then finally trading stock deficit was another problem area 8,000 was our budget but the actual was 12,300 so clearly we were we over budget or uh, we went over the budget by 4,300 we incurred more losses in terms of our stock right let's go to our answer sheet Okay. Right, so in our answer sheet, we've listed our three expenses, maintenance of property, water and electricity, and then we've got trading stock. Let's look at, remember, the question wants you to quote figures to support your answer, so we've done that. Maintenance of property is 3,000 Rand over budget. So in other words, the 7,000 is our actual, and we're quoting the budget figure was 4,000. Next expense, water and electricity, is 4,400 Rand over budget. In brackets, 5,600 was the actual expense versus the budgeted figure of 1,200. And then finally, trading stock deficit, another expense that is 4,300 Rand over budget. We expected or our actual, sorry, our actual was 12,300, but the budget uh, accounted for or made provision for rather 8,000. 
the next question, guys, 1.6. Refer to additional information three, which we will do in a minute. Jim is of the opinion that he could benefit financially if he accepts Samuel's offer. State three points that would have a positive effect on this projected income statement for January 2013 if he accepts the offer. Give reasons or give figures or information from the question to support your answer. Okay, so the first thing that I think we should do is let's refer to information three. Let's go back to information three so that we know exactly what, uh, what happened as far as information three is concerned. Okay, so the information right at the bottom, we're looking at the last bit of info. Jim would like to improve his projected net income and is considering a proposal from a local businessman, Samuel. Samuel is prepared to purchase all the land and buildings of the business from Jim for 1,5 million during the month of December 2012 and to rent it to him for 10,500 Rand per month. Jim is interested in this offer as he knows that he will, this will, okay, let's take that from the top. Jim is interested in this offer as he knows that this will enable him to repay the loan from his brother in full on the 1st of January 2013. So remember, information number one um, obviously gave us a bit more about the loan. The loan was taken from his brother and the loan amount was at that point, I think it was a million or 1,2 million. The loan on this date would be 850,000. He will also be able to invest the surplus funds in a fixed deposit at 6% per annum. Okay, so clearly, if you look at this situation that is presented, this offer that is presented, there's going to be certain benefits to Jim accepting the offer, but there could be also certain negative points that we're going to have to take into account in the next question, which I haven't really read as yet. But let's start off by looking at the positives in accepting this offer itself. Now, remember, the moment you say sell the land and buildings. Obviously, you're losing the asset. But by losing this asset, he would no longer incur any maintenance expenses. So if we go to our projected income statement, okay, and if we look at the maintenance on the property, which is obviously an expense, the maintenance is 4,000. So immediately by selling the property, um, he is not responsible for maintaining the property. That becomes the responsibility of the new owner. So immediately he will not or no longer be paying 4,000 in terms of this expense itself. What else will fall away? Municipal rates on the property Again, the municipal rates for this property is 1,000 Rand per month. And if you do not own the property, you are not responsible to pay the rates on this property. So immediately, this will also fall away. Now remember, guys, as your expenses decrease, what's going to eventually happen to net profit? absolutely correct. Your profit is going to go up. Your profit is going to increase. So immediately we can see a drop in expenses which will result in an increase in profit. Okay, right. If we look further down, telephone, that, that's something he's probably still going to pay. Water and electricity, he will still pay. Okay, so if I move down to the very last expense, interest expense, his monthly expense or if we take December, his interest expense for December is 11,250. Now, if he's going to use the proceeds from selling the property to pay off the loan, because that's what the information tells us, he wants to sell the property so that he could pay off the loan, he would obviously not incur this expense any longer. So this 11,200 Rand falls away as well. So again, we can see a drop in expenses means an increase 
in profit. Okay, you guys with me on that. Right, obviously I know what you're thinking. There are negatives as well to selling the property, but we're gonna come to that. Let's answer this part of the question first. So let's go to our answer sheet. Okay, and let's look at some of the responses that you could give. Okay, so some of the responses would be as follows. He will be saving interest on loan, okay? And remember, they want you to quote figures. So we could quote the 10,625. He will be paying no interest on the loan. In other words, interest on loan falls away immediately because there is no loan. And this would result in an increase in net profit. Right, further to that, he will be earning interest on a fixed deposit, 6%, okay, off 650000 In other words, every month he will be earning interest on fixed deposit, 3250 Right, now you guys are probably thinking, where are these figures coming from? So let's go back to the information quickly so that I can explain this point further. Okay, so to the bottom of the slide, let's just quickly extend the page. Remember, the loan amount, okay, at the date of sale would be 850,000. Okay, so that would be your loan amount what Jim is owing his brother when he he is obviously going to sell the property itself. The selling price that he expects to receive for the property, if we go further up, the selling price is one and a half million. So the selling price, 1.5 million. Okay, so immediately, if he's going to pay off the loan, okay, so the loan, he's going to be, let's start with the selling price, one and a half million minus he's owing 850,000 which means he's going to be left over with a capital sum of 650,000 okay so 650,000 would be the funds that he could now take and invest in a fixed deposit Okay, and if you're going to invest money in a fixed deposit, you would obviously earn interest. Okay, so the interest that we would earn, let's do the calculation. So your capital amount that you're going to invest in the fixed deposit, 650,000 times 6%. Okay, divide by 12. So your monthly interest on fixed deposit would be 3,250. Let's just write that down for you guys. 3,250. And this would obviously be interest income to the business as from the month of January when the business plans on investing these funds into a fixed deposit. So clearly, if there's an additional income, this would result in a higher net profit. And that's what Jim wants to achieve. Okay, so let's go back to the question. So the second point I've explained, he will be earning interest on a fixed deposit, 6% off 650,000. Then something that we've already picked up from that projected income statement, he will save on maintenance costs. Remember the building or the land and buildings no longer belong to Jim. So he's not responsible for maintenance. He will incur no maintenance cost. And again, the result of that that would be a higher net profit. He will also save on rates, so he would be no longer responsible for paying the municipality 1,000 Rand per month. Other points that you could also look at, the rent expense is 125 Rand less than the interest on the loan. So remember, this would be 
the interest on the loan that we would have paid for the month of December versus the rent that the new owner will now be charging Jim. So if Jim is going to pay 10,500 Rand, that's going to be his new rent. Obviously, if we compare this to the interest that he would be paying, we can conclude that the interest um, on the loan is much higher than the rent that he's paying or, as the point suggests, the rent expense is less than the interest on loan. Okay, and then finally, a last point that I want to quickly look at. Remember, guys, we don't expect you to write down all these points. I think the question wanted you to um, look at just three points. And we've looked at quite a few, but the last point that I want to explain on this particular question, he will reflect a profit on sale of property of 300,000 in the income statement. Now, what do we mean by this? The business is obviously selling or disposing of an asset, and this asset was purchased for 1,2 million. Okay, so that was obviously the cost price of the asset. The asset will be sold for an amount of 1,5 million. Okay, so this is my selling price. If I had to then draw up an asset disposal T account, okay, so asset disposal, cost price is 1,5 2 million selling price is an amount of 1,5 million so clearly the business would be making a profit on sale of asset 1,5 minus 1,2 million of 300,000 Okay, and that profit needs to be reflected in that income statement. And again, a profit on sale of asset will increase your net profit because that's what Jim wants to achieve. He wants to show a higher net profit. Okay, right, let's now look at the very last question for um, question six or this particular question on the projected income statement. The last question still relates to um, question 1.6, Jim's decision on whether or not to sell his property. Let's read this part of the question. Jim is also conscious of the fact that there are negative points if he accepts the offer. State two points that Jim should consider before finalizing his decision to sell the property and they want you to explain. So in other words, yes, we've looked at all the positives for him selling the property. He's going to be able to show a higher net profit, but are there any negative points when it comes to selling property? Right, some of the negative points that we could include in our answer. Firstly, he will be losing an asset. He's selling an asset, so he's obviously no longer going to own that asset, which appreciates in value over time. Now, we know from the three non-current assets that we've learned in grade 10, 11, and 12, what am I talking about? I'm talking about equipment vehicles and land and buildings. Whereas your vehicles and equipment depreci depreciates in value, it loses value over time, property is the only non-current asset where the value appreciates. In other words, it increases over time. So for example, the property could be valued at 1,5 million in the year 2013, but if we look at the year 2014, that price could increase to 2 million. It increases over a period of time. And immediately by him selling this asset, obviously he is not going to um, obtain a higher price in the future or make a higher profit should he sell the property in two or three years from now.
Right, the next point, the value of the land and buildings may increase by more than the rent that he is paying. Remember, he's going to obviously, the plan is for him to sell the property, but to rent from the new owner um, a certain section of the property. So the value of land and buildings could be much higher than the rent that he is paying. He will also be losing rent income. Now remember, from the information that was given to us, he receives a monthly rent of 5,460. Again, if he's going to sell the property, that property does not belong to him, and therefore he is not going to be receiving this rent that he received in the past. Okay, the next point to consider, he will now be paying rent. The rental could increase annually. It's not going to stay at 10,500 Rand per month. It is going to increase. And then the final point that I want to explain, or the, uh, the two points that's left for me to explain, it could hamper future developments of the business. So for example, at a later stage, if he wants to expand or if the business operations or activities grow, remember, he doesn't have or he does not own this property anymore. So obviously, this could hamper future developments of the business itself. He might then have to buy new premises should he wish to expand in the future. And guys, the very last point, he will not have collateral in the form of property. So for example, what do we mean by this? If he wants to take out a loan in the future, remember, if you, if you take out a loan, you obviously need to have some kind of collateral. If you cannot pay back the loan, the banks may repossess your property. And um, because he does not have this collateral, it might be a bit difficult for him to obtain a long-term loan in the future. Okay. All right, guys, we've come to the end of um, this question on um, the projected income statement. I hope you were able to recap and revise the important terminology that I touched on. Remember, guys, when preparing for your final exams or for any exams, remember, in accounting, you've got to practice, practice, practice. From myself, Mahesh Lal, it's time for me to sign off and to wish you guys all the best for the exams that you are writing. Thanks, guys. See you soon.